What about soy? Another controversial food. And when it comes to the thyroid specifically, is this something people that are, you know, if they're either borderline and, and having symptoms of a thyroid condition, or if they're known to have Hashimoto's or some other thyroid condition, are they safe to consume? You know, here's my evolution on that one. So for a while, I didn't have a lot of thoughts either way. Um, then probably, I guess, late 90s, early 2000s, many of my friends were in the thyroid space. We're talking more and more about it being a bad thing. And somehow or other, it, it drifted into my writings. I put it in the avoid list and I hadn't given it a lot of thought in all honesty. And I am not proud of saying that I said that without thinking it through very well, but I did. Uh, I had a friend who shared with me a paper that he had written going through evidence about beneficial effects of soy in terms of cardiovascular disease, breast cancer risk, bone health, menopausal symptoms. And his take was, you know, if your people really should avoid that, perhaps, but if it's if it's a not a big deal, there may be some benefits they're missing out on. And so it encouraged me to really not make assumptions and dig deep. So I dug deep, but also I reached out to all my thyroid expert friends and I said, hey, you guys, um, show me, send me the data, you know, send me the studies. And I, I don't really have a bone in the fight here or a dog in the fight, I guess, but I don't really care what happens. I just want to figure this out and send me whatever references you have that have supported the conclusion about soy being harmful for the thyroid. And what happened was there was basically, uh, there was like three recurrent pieces of data. One of which was a long time ago when they first started making infant formulas with soy, they didn't understand the distinct binding patterns from one protein to the next on minerals. You know, case in point, uh, casein in dairy has a certain affinity for iron. And so knowing that when you make an infant formula and it's got cow's milk, let's say just making up numbers, these are not correct numbers, but let's say that you want the baby to receive three milligrams of iron per day. And let's say that the baby's getting 10 grams of casein. Knowing the binding affinity, you've got to put six milligrams of iron because half is going to get bound up and it'll all work out okay. And again, made up numbers. <laughs> so, so, but they didn't know how that played out between soy and iodine. So the first versions of formula, they because the babies in these cases are getting all their nutrients from the formula and they need some iodine. So the first versions of that, they, they just put in how much iodine they thought the babies needed and they didn't know to make a correction factor. And there were some babies that had goitrogenic effects from that because they were really just undertreated on iodine. Once that was learned and the correction factors were made, it became a non-issue. But that set an idea in motion about, huh, maybe soy was bad. And well, yeah, in that context, so the next thing that happened, and this is bizarre, I have no explanation for this one. There was, and I'm sorry, and I'm, I'm skipping over massive amounts of studies that, that yielded no effects whatsoever. So these are the three things that suggest there might be some effect. So the other study that suggests there might be some effect, they purported that siblings, so if, uh, and I've got a younger sister, so if we were in this study and I consumed soy formula, she would have a higher risk of thyroid disease per this study. Now, Explain that to me by some biological common sense. <laughs> no, nobody could. It was never replicated. It made no sense, but that's a study that's out there. And it was not even a large effect size. The last one, the only one study that it all hinged on, there's a thing called subclinical hypothyroidism, which means your thyroid has not shut off, but it looks like it's going to, but you, and you, ha you yet have no symptoms from that. So you feel fine. Your TSH is up. Everything else is normal. That's subclinical hypothyroidism. And this paper said, higher soy diets worsened the lapse rate of subclinical hypothyroidism into overt hypothyroidism. I'm like, wow, this might be the smoking gun. So I read the, read the full paper and it turned out they had two groups of people, all of whom had subclinical disease and all of whom were on soy diets, all of whom were on soy supplements. But one group had a higher dose of soy supplements than the other. And they did have more of a lapse into overt hypothyroidism. What they didn't talk about was the baseline rate of lapse. You know, how many of them should have become hypothyroid anyway? And the number that we see is about 6% per year of those with subclinical disease that lapse into hypothyroidism. So I did the math and it turned out that the, the group on a high soy diet, high soy supplements, they were about seven, seven and a half percent per year conversion. They did get a bit worse on, on the group aggregate. However, the group that was on soy supplements and, a, and still a so high soy diet, they had a lower lapse rate into hypothyroidism than, than the baseline would have predicted. So a big made analysis was done in 2019 and it pulled together 4,582 studies. I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. I looked at that just a few days ago. And their consensus was that just there's no effect. There's just no effect of soy on thyroid disease. But 
in women, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, yeah, menopausal symptoms, cardiovascular health, bone health, breast cancer. And recently, we've now got the most definitive thought on breast cancer. For a while, we thought, huh, soy is estrogenic, maybe it makes it worse, who knows? So the final study looked at women who had hormonally sensitive breast cancer. And after treatment, they put them in two groups. One group had a rather high soy diet on purpose. One group had none. And they watched recurrence and they watched death rates, you know, just like hard outcomes. And those who were avoiding soy had higher rates of breast cancer recurrence and higher rates of death than those who were deliberately consuming soy. So we now know that overall, soy is preventive for breast cancer. And it's not only that, it's actually helpful for those who have had it before.